We are 45 miles from the coast of Gaza and three warships have appeared. They've jammed our radar, jammed our communication. Very difficult to make any calls on satellite phone, internet is down. There's also a military helicopter hovering above. They've made radio contact with us. They've asked for our destination. The organizers of this boat have said the destination of the boat is the conscience of humanity. That's not a, an answer that the Israelis are accepting. They're demanding to know where these boats are going, although it's very clear where these boats are headed. They're continuing at full speed towards Gaza, and the three very, very large warships are closing in slowly from either side onto these boats. Uh, and I anticipate very soon uh, the smaller boats filled with soldiers will uh, intercept and perhaps attack these vessels. But we'll have to wait and see at the moment. Uh, we're waiting to see how the Israeli, re the Israeli military uh, reacts to the response they've been given so far. Yeah, all right. The, just tell us a little bit about the mood amongst the passengers at the moment. Are people scared? What, what okay. are they thinking? Okay. People have been anticipating this moment for three days now, so they're reacting in a very calm manner. But of course, this morning there, there was a lot of optimism because the Israelis hadn't made any contact even when we entered 100 nautical miles to Gaza. Now, obviously, those uh, hopes of reaching Gaza are beginning to fall apart uh, as these warships close in. There's a real concern, of course, a lot of people are very frustrated by the fact that communications are jammed. We've moved closer to the Irish ship, the Sarche, because uh, we were keeping some distance from them for safety reasons, but we are now moving closer to them for protection. And there's not much protection to offer uh, from three very large warships, and as I said, military helicopters hovering overhead. Uh, at the moment, they look like they're about eight kilometers away, but that distance and that gap is closing, uh, and people are deciding what to do and how to react as the situation develops. Are the passengers going to offer any resistance when the ship is boarded? Well, the passengers, there's only um, six activists on this ship, 15 activists on the other ship. Uh, the rest of the passengers on this ship are journalists. They said that they will only offer passive resistance. They'll tell the Israelis that this is an act of piracy. It's illegal. They will not disembark the boat voluntarily. They'll have to be dragged off, and the boat will have to be dragged uh, to Ashdod if it's going if it's going to be dragged anywhere. Um, but they won't put up the kind of resistance that we still have seen on the first freedom of Sila. Uh, it's a different strategy this time, even though the resistance put up on the first freedom of Sila was legitimate given the attack that it was uh, placed under. Why do you think the Israelis have waited until you are so close to Gaza to intercept you? It's hard to tell what the Israelis are thinking. Of course, this was still set off in secret. There was no publicity, no warning ahead of time. Um, so that may have potentially caught them off guard. Well, they have had two days, two, three days to prepare for its arrival. Um, and of course, it's a much smaller flotilla. It's two fairly small boats compared to the large, uh, larger flotillas that we saw earlier this year and the year before. So they're probably quite confident that they can handle it. But of course, we have had incidents in the past. The first five attempts to break into, break the siege and enter Gaza through sea were successful. The Israelis warned the ships, made contact, but actually let them go. Um, so perhaps that's what they're going to do now, but we have to see what happens. Of course, the first thing that they always do is uh, try and uh, instill fear uh, on the passengers on the boat. Uh, with their very, very heavy presence, three extremely large warships for two very small boats uh, is uh, clearly overkill. Okay, F Hassan, finally, what do you think is going to happen to the crew uh, the money you have on board and the aid. What's going to happen to you guys now? Well, if the Israelis decide to take these boats, they're going to have to drag them to Ashdod and drag the passengers off. Uh, and then it depends. Obviously, there's one young Palestinian on board who is technically uh, an Israeli uh, citizen. He's very concerned about what's going to happen to him. Uh, I was on the Mavi Marmara last year uh, and I was told uh, not to come back uh, on a flotilla. And of course, I work for Press TV, so it's uh, it is a bit of concern about uh, what's going to happen to me, but it's probably what's happened in the past is that internationals have been deported uh, to their country of origin or uh, on the first freedom flotilla were deported to Turkey. That's 
probably what's going to happen. But, of course, there is no uh, consistency in Israel's actions, so nobody can really predict what it will do and how it will behave this time around. Okay, all right, thanks, Essen, and good luck. Just to update you, I can see four or five more all right. ships ahead of us. No, more than that, five. It's like half the Israeli Navy is turned up. So we've got three more ships on either side. There are another, another four or five military vessels straight ahead of us as well. It's getting quite scary. Okay, and just let them know there are at least uh, now six or seven, seven Israeli, Israeli uh, warships or vessels in the sea around us now. We're surrounded.